Hey, everybody out there. I am your host, Elysia Bus for E Squared Empowerment with Elysia, inspiring, connecting, and changing the world. And this evening, we have the one and only amazing Sherry Hall coming to us from Washington, D.C. She is the CEO and founder of Elevate C3, and she does corporate consulting to help with equity, diversity, and inclusion. And she also creates training programs. She is launching a women's empowerment group. She is in fiercely advocating for marginalized groups and people who are just underrepresented in general. And on top of all of that, she's also a US Air Force veteran, which I just discovered. I was just like, what? That's even so, so much cooler. There's so many stories here. And um, yeah, I just, I've been trying to get a hold of Sherry for probably like, <laughs> We met in the summer at <laughs> Brianna's Megan's um, Women's Empowerment like event. Sabrina was on day one of celebrating Black History Month. In case anybody wants to go check her stuff out, but I was so blown away by Sherry when I met her that I have like literally just been nagging, be like, "We have to be friends." I'm sorry, we have to be friends. Yeah. You have to come be interviewed by me. You're just too awesome. So after my rambling intro, Sherry, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Listen, the universe aligned us to finally connect and get this done. So we were, you know, it was kismic when we met in the summer. And so here we are. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. And um, yeah. And thank you for your service, You're both in the welcome. past and in the, in the present. Very well. <laughs> yeah. So Sherry, I would love to get to hear like so much about your journey. So start wherever you want. And um, as we oftentimes start our interviews, what is an obstacle that you have overcome in being able to do all the amazing things that you're doing today, um, impacting the world and making it a better place? Um, that's, you know, I am closer to 50 than I am to 40. Um, <laughs> so, I've done, so I've done a lot. And, um, and when I think about like my challenges, um, and, and, and I'll just, I think it's important that I speak to the work that I do and where I do it and why I do it. Yeah, absolutely. We're and talk about, it. and you know, and talk about my challenges um, because I'm so absolutely focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion in corporate spaces for people of color. My journey around this body of work has, is, has been long. I've always been an advocate in, in this, in corporate spaces. Awesome. Now, when I was younger, of course, in my early 20s, that advocacy came, you know, it, it showed up. It always showed up because it's just who I am. I'm always right. trying to be a voice for the voiceless. Um, so I find myself in at work, you know, advocating for people, advocating for my peers, like I'm an assistant or something or, you know, and here I am trying to fight the fight for someone or trying to tell someone how they should show up or, you know, defend themselves. So I've always done this work at, at some level. It's just that the older I got, you know, I had to lay an academia lens over the work. And then I had to streamline my approach um, because I learned about impact. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just being a bull in a china closet. At least like, I, I'm speaking for me on, on that one too. Like I have, I, yeah, I've been kicked out of colleges before yeah. for standing up against um, things that were not okay that were happening in colleges. So yeah. yeah, when people are like, oh yeah, you went to 10 colleges, like why is that so great? I'm like, oh no, no, that's not, it's not, like, it's not like a straight path sort of situation. It was more of just like, they actually kicked me out of one because mm -hmm. I told them things they wanted, didn't want to hear because I stood exactly. up to the voiceless and yeah. like, yeah. And it's not always, it's not comfortable to do, but it's so incredibly important. Yeah, it's important. It's important to do, but, but what I have learned and what I try and pass on to people when I engage with them, especially like clients, what I'm talking about, you know, how do you show up? and be powerful and be confident and be impactful and be influential without, you know, deterring people from gravitating towards you or to yes. gravitating towards your message. Oh so <laughs> that is an acquired skill, oh, you know? Praise it, is, yeah. <laughs> it is oh. an acquired skill. It takes Listen, so long sometimes. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, and I have been there. I have been in oh. the workplace and raising 
her hail because something is not right, but nobody's listening to me. Thank God for age. Yes. <laughs> I'm, wisdom. I'm telling you, and experience because, <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't do this work that I do and I can't not be impactful. So I have to consider my audience. Mm -hmm. What is, the, how do I ensure that they hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And when, when I do this work and you, you see me in action, when I talk about this work, I'm oh, extremely yeah. direct and honest and authentic. Um, but the message is always rooted in, you know, being better. It's yeah. always rooted in showing up for yourself. Um, so I, of course, you know, I do this work for a, a nonprofit in DC. Um, but then I also consult and then I, and then I'm, and then as if I'm not busy enough, and we were just talking about this, how busy we are. Oh my God. Let's do something else. <laughs> um, there's, so always now, more to do. there's always more, you know, and I, I don't subscribe to the, we'll sleep when we're dead. So I don't subscribe to that because I believe in rest is, is resistance. So it's part of the fight. It's, you know, you got to rest. I got to fuel up in order for me to go out and have difficult conversations with people. So um, but I do believe in using your talents across as many mediums as you can. So that's me, women's empowerment. I have my circle and my network is so vast and, it, it, and so many people in my network are in different levels of their life. Mm. But one thing I found mm -hmm. that I was always doing, I was always encouraging and empowering and coaching and walking people through things. And I'm like, I literally do this as a profession, you know, why am I not creating a, a safe space for women who don't have a network? Yeah. You know, it to is. lean into somewhere and say, I'm blocked. I'm stuck. How do I move and get to the other side of unstuck? You know? So that's really my focus about, you know, creating space for women in corporate spaces. Um, to kind of lean in, I walk them through this program that I'm creating um, to talk about getting on the other side of unstuck, of stuck, you know? So let's get unstuck, you know? Um, listen, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, and like, and on top of all that, you have a new grandbaby. Grand yes. I, listen, you know how people tell you, you, you can, you'll never love a grand. I've heard it, my mom said it all the time. You, the love you have for a grandchild is so much different from the love that you have for your child. Like I only have one daughter, so I only have one child. And people who know me and just know how I am with her, they know how much I love this girl. But she gave me a grandson and I, was, I still love her. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, um, but this kid. <laughs> but, yes, but the, but the grandbaby. Girl, I cannot, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm so obsessed. I'm so obsessed. I'm so obsessed. I'm like, I'm working today. And of course, you know, she's out, you know, working. So I'm just like, oh, bring them over here. I'll watch them. As if I don't have an executive job, as if I don't have meetings, as if I don't have projects that I have deadlines on. I'm just like, I got it. You know, I just want to be near him. But yeah, so I'm a new grandma. Such um, a beautiful thing. I just I'm love so it excited. so much. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, listen, life is good. Life is busy, but life is good. I'm grateful. Yeah, yeah. I'm full of gratitude, you know, for even having the ability and the wherewithal to do all of the things that I do, you know. Yeah. Um, I am, you know, we've talked about this, you know, in the summer, just talking about just this, this gratitude and this graciousness to be able to be in a moment, recognize what we have, um, you know, and, but still rest yeah. and still give, give to the world, you know, um, the, you know, share our gifts. So life is, life is good. Knock on wood, right? Yeah, no, for, no, for sure. Like I think about that too. It's just like last night I slept for nine hours. And yeah, and it, like, honestly, because I too, I'm just like, yeah, I'm busy. I work a lot. I've got tons of projects and people are like, when do you sleep? <laughs> I'm like, oh, let me tell you oh. every night, like seven <laughs> to nine hours. I do not set my alarm in the morning 
unless yeah. I absolutely have to. So like if my body says we wake up at 6.30, we wake up at 6.30. Wake up. We wake up at 9.30, like that's totally fine too. I do yeah. not work with clients before 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, like the I love it. Is my time. I'm like, I write in my gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. I free journal. I read books. Like I just got Brene Brown's new Atlas of the Heart. I'm like over the moon Ooh. excited about that. I'm like, you're obsessed about that. your baby. I'm obsessed about Brene Brown. Like I love mm -hmm. her. She is life-changing. Anybody that's love not her. already reading her, like, please do. My bucket Love list it. item is to have her come speak in an, an event with horses that I do, like a retreat. Ooh, yeah. So, if anybody we'll else to put that out in the universe. It's Renee happening. Brown, like, she's yes, calling. yes, it's happening. And I have people tell me all the time, I have this beautiful joke, and I hope she doesn't find this offensive at all, but um, people are just like, oh my gosh, like, you remind me of Brene Brown. I'm like, no, 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 Brene Brown reminds you of me because. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blame it. <laughs> like, all right, let's see. I mean, like, we're both we're both awesome in different ways, exactly. and I love that our person. We should totally be friends. Um, exactly. exactly. I love you're already friends in your head. Yeah, we're totally friends in our head. Like, I tell people, I'm just like, well, if you like my personality, you're gonna love Brittany's friends. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Listen, if we don't hype ourselves up, and you know, who's gonna do it? I, you know, you just got, it's got to start with belief in yourself. Like, it can be Absolutely. playful. You know, like, life, life can be very messy. And so much is, like, owning your mess. And yes. I hopped on with Sherry tonight, and I was like, she's like, how are you? And I was just like, I have a headache. I'm tired. And my food just got here late. And we're just like, this is this is life. You know, yeah. it's just like, and there's nothing to feel ashamed about. And we're still going to show up. We're still yeah. going to have fun. And I'm just like, hey, like, I might not be on point tonight. And that's yeah. fine. It's fine. <laughs> it is fine. That's why. I, and I'm like, listen, if you need to eat while we're while we're recording, do you? Yeah. And I yeah. so appreciated like that, just like that grace and mm -hmm. like the realness of it and just being like, yeah. hey, you know, like, why stress out about it? Like, that's not yeah. what this is about. You know, it's, it's, it's right. Yeah. Let's model being real being real you know it's so fun you made a really good point and it just makes me think about myself earlier in my career I was very I, I learned I you know when I learned late but I guess I did learn late but I right did, on time I, I learned right on time that I needed to give people grace if I wanted to do the work that I do yeah because it's such hard work that I'm literally just like, I expect people to lean into the work and I expect them to, you know, be honest and be open and listen and change and grow. And my, and, and because I'm so passionate about, you know, just social justice and just yeah. equity, I just wanted people to just do. And I, I didn't have a lot of room for grace for people, but now it's, and, you know, and if you, if people follow me on social media, I'm a, I'm a hard ass, you know, I'll just say it. I am. <laughs> when it comes to race, you know, race relations and social justice, I am. So I'm very, I'm very clear about where I stand when it comes to those things. And I'm not shy about sharing my opinions about it. But when I'm engaging with someone who genuinely and authentically wants to learn and wants to be better and wants to acknowledge the harm that they've caused unintentionally, Listen, I'm handing out grace, girl. Like I'm at the church. Like, <laughs> get this grace. Oh God, yeah. I love that so much. Wait, I think we might need to like caption that. Yes. <laughs> like that needs to be like on your website. Yeah, not grace. Like I'm at church. Like uh, I'm in church because you have to. You have to. And and I think that's how. Uh, honestly, I think that's what draws people who don't identify as black or brown. I think that's what attracts them to my work I because it. let's talk about it. You know, we, oh, we, I, 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 I do know because I, <laughs> I am not. Yes. Right? Yes. I, like, the conversations are hard. And like, oh, hard. you show up and you don't want to make a mistake and you have questions, but you feel like somebody's going to yell at you and call you racist and tell you that you're a piece of shit. If you ask the mm -hmm. wrong question to the wrong person, it makes it really daunting and it makes change more difficult. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, like I have absolutely, I will 
transparently say I have been in that position where I'm just like, yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. But I also want to know. And then I like, I want to understand because what might seem simple and is, is sometimes not. And it was so interesting yeah. because one time I was even on an interview with somebody I deeply respect who's also white and mm-hmm. she, um, she studies trauma. Mm-hmm. And so we had, she, she called me out a little bit, which was like another white person. Going on right? and, it was, and it was really good though, because we had this very honest conversation, even though it's a little awkward in the middle of this interview right. talking about, because for me, um, I, for my empowerment coaching, I help people with emotional mastery and it's mm. very much about personal accountability. And like, I tell people all the time, I'm like, fall in love with your triggers because they show you where you need to grow. Yeah. And it's not about condoning the actions of the person that like initiates initiates the reaction within you mm-hmm. because there's lots of behaviors that are not acceptable but when if you can forgive those people and mm-hmm. own like the experience you're having inside of yourself like that's where real yeah. grace and growth can occur mm-hmm. but sometimes if you say that to somebody who is very invested in their triggers yeah then yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. right it, that, it feels minimizing and, right, yeah. it feels minimizing and like that's yeah. not the intent the intention is to empower people and right. understand that the only person that can like truly empower you at the end of the day is you yeah because it's, a, it, it's so a, true. yeah and it's that's a hard thing for some people to like really swallow and have if that's not where they're at and they don't have the support and the bandwidth to create that space for themselves yeah yeah, yeah. it's hard yeah I, I definitely try and create that space it's i'm just like listen I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna, you know, fix the world's racism problem. But what I can do is I can impact in, you know, those in my sphere, you know, those that I can connect with, you know, those that I can have conversation with. Those are the people that I can impact, you know, impart change in and knowledge in, and then they pass it on. They change behavior, they have conversations, so it, it so it doesn't stop. I'm so um, I figure I look at it like I impart in you, you impart in others. You, you know, yeah, ripple effect. Absolutely, that like me thinking about wanting to empower a billion people before I die on the planet. Yeah, it's yeah. not just like the FaceTime I have with each person. It's that ripple effect and how it goes out into the world. Yes, exactly. Be intentional. Be you know, strive to be impactful. Yeah, and then there you go. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I have a I have a question in regards to speaking of uncomfortable conversations. Yes. Let's just go there. Um, go there. So in regards to racism, so for some people um, that they're with one friend group and behavior is completely acceptable mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. they engage with people and the intentionality there. And then mm-hmm. they go to another group of people and they say the same things to people mm-hmm. of color potentially, and then they're called racist. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you sometimes navigate that conversation with people? Because I feel like I look at it as like kind of like the military a little bit. Like if you're a Marine mm-hmm. you're and you speak to your other your fellow Marines in a certain way, you don't speak mm-hmm. that same way when you go to church or you're in front of kids right. or you're at the library. And that's kind of the way that I look at that. But I feel yeah. like that's just slightly different from the standpoint of like, well, I thought it was okay over here. And now I would go around to a, a new group of people and I don't have that awareness and I'm not right. reading the, I'm not reading the room correctly or whatever and then right. somebody potentially gets shut down so what would be your advice to a person that may have experienced that before one of my things is and, and we get this all the time you know as a black woman in this space of social justice and diversity equity and inclusion we have this conversation all the time especially around people you know wanting to use the n-word and you know that don't identify as black and and it's, and it's one of the, and the, you know, and I'll say this, I do, these are uncomfortable conversations for a lot of people. I don't feel uncomfortable when I have these conversations because I'm just like, <laughs> you're just like, no, yeah, because it is a question for some people. They're just like, why do you hate the word so much and don't want us to say it, but it's right. to, it to each other. And it's just like, and that is the question. It that is the question. It's all about familiarity and similarity. Okay. You are us. <laughs> it's very <laughs> simple. <laughs> you, it is, it is, and you know, it is so far. And, and I, God bless people. God bless people, you know. 
because they, they want to have this extremely long dissertation around why white people can't say the N word, but we say it. You just can't. <laughs> That's like that's the end of the conversation. <laughs> the end of the conversation. I and you know, and it's so funny because I get this, I get this question in groups all the time. And it's so funny. And it's such a short-lived conversation because I'm just like, you can't. <laughs> you're like, it you is know? like and the other people, they're like, but I want to understand why. And you're just like, it just like you're just that's the why. Like I ask really them weird. the question, but why do you want to say it so bad? And then it's like oh, well, I don't, I just feel like if you say it, but you're not me, you, you aren't me. You don't have those experiences that my ancestors that are rooted into my, they, they are embedded into my DNA. My ancestral experiences yeah. are embedded into my DNA. Science proves it. Yeah, so this is absolutely a thing, you know, so you can't say what I say. We use, you know, we use the N word as it, we've completely flipped it on his head. Because when I say A, you say E-R when you mad. But even when I'm mad, it's always a, uh, you know? <laughs> that makes a difference, you know? And it, it makes a difference. So I'm your uh, if I let you slide and I'm your uh when we laughing and joking. But when you're angry, if I, if something happens and then it's an ER and then we got a whole problem. So how about we reserve what's ours? <laughs> That's so interesting. I really appreciate your openness and like candor about talking about it because mm -hmm. um, like I have had a couple conversations with different men about their perspective and, um, and I, I would, I would love to have a giant group conversation someday. <laughs> I would love it. <laughs> it would be, it would be amazing because they're, um, there's power in words, right? Absolutely. And one person said that like part of what they uh, had done in the black community from taking it, like you said, flipping it on its head is that like you took it from a place of being um, oppressed and you're just like, no, we're gonna take control of this word and this word is going to be ours. It's not, it's not yours anymore. It is you're, not. Yeah. It is not yours anymore. You do not yeah. get to use this word. And, um, and then it was interesting because of like, the other part of that perspective that he had shared with me, and he's a black man, is mm -hmm. that um, the energy that it carries with the word. And yeah. so it was an interesting conversation of like, well, how are you putting it towards yourself with the power of the history of the word, since you are talking about epigenetics and like yeah. carrying forward of that. And it's just like, I think it's, it's different for each person and how they frame yeah. and carry the word. Yeah. Like I went through a time in my, which is like similar, but very different. Uh, earlier in my life when you know like for women we go through a stage when we call each other bitches yes yes right? of course uh -huh. and, and like I don't like it when people call me a bitch or call mm -hmm. call each other a bitch because I'm just like yeah we're like we're not female dogs like mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I understand your playfulness of it but the, and there's a power that they feel like it's too and like I'm like yeah I've totally said I'm a badass bitch before like yeah. but and yeah. I when I see women like posting that in social media mm -hmm. I struggle with it a little bit because I feel like in a way it stems from a space of scarcity and mm -hmm. like insecurity instead of being like well why do you have to be a badass bitch like why can't you just be like or even like when you say a badass like isn't mm -hmm. it like there's this power in that sort of like experience in the story of like coming up right because mm -hmm. you're a rebel you're coming up against society and it's just like well, mm -hmm. why can't you just be powerful in and of yourself yeah. Just like I see yeah. a lot of women that are business owners like ourselves oftentimes yeah. are operating in our masculine energy because mm -hmm. we're coming up against the masculine, right? Like we want to compete yeah. on that same level. Mm -hmm. And instead of just being like, our feminine flow is more than powerful enough to play on that same level. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it's okay. And so like that, this last year, I focused a lot of being like, I am going to operate and make my business sex successful in mm -hmm. my feminine yeah, I spent like my whole life deeply immersed in my masculine. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, like a super yes. strong personality, and I have been super successful this year in my feminine and trying to be a role model. But it's such an interesting conversation of like, well, if we're going to empower ourselves, let's empower ourselves in our authentic space and not trying to put ourselves in the position that like, oh no, yeah. like we have to be like you to compete mm -hmm. with you. No, right. we can be different than you and also be equal and compete with And you. also be successful. And you know, it's one of those things and when we have these conversations 
these black and white conversations, um, I often teach and explain that when, when a white person is adamant around being able to, you know, be able to say the N word jokingly or as fun, I always tell them your desire to want to be able to say a word that historically oppressed a people is rooted in privilege. Society has taught you that you get what you want simply because you want it. And because we're saying that you can't, that's how that makes you want it even more. So I'm a, I have a t-shirt that says, check your privilege. And I wear it all the time, <laughs> but that's what it is. You know, it's almost like children. When you tell kids they can't have something, they want it even more. Because, <laughs> because black culture has taken that word and just like, no, that's a communal thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. white people who operate and move through the world in privilege and power, they're just like, oh, I want to say it. But then when you get checked on it and it's like, why can't I say it? Listen, that's your privilege talking. That's not you really trying to articulate to me a real reason for why you want to say a word that your people used to oppress my people. Yeah, and I would I really, be embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> for sure. I like I really appreciate how you've articulated that this evening because it's such like a simple and very clear explanation of all that. Like I genuinely wanted to know. Like I, I don't I have zero interest in ever saying that word. It's not been a thing right. for me. But understanding the concept is something that was of interest. Um, of me, of this to me. Uh, I'm sorry, I was wondering. No, it's, it's totally <laughs> fine. Uh, my friend Neil said, loving this conversation, it has always amazed me why any white person would want to use that word. And that's, and that's yeah. Neil, and, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, why? But it's also, we come from a culture, like our society in the US in general, of yeah. instant gratification and also a very, like so many people struggle tremendously with boundaries of any sort. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just like, oh, well, God. Yeah. if you care about the person in front of you, regardless of color, gender, socioeconomic status, religion, politics, whatever, if you care about that person and then they tell you like, I don't feel comfortable with you saying X, Y, or Z, mm -hmm. that should be the end of that conversation. You but you know what happened? give you an answer. Right. It, but you, you know, know what is interesting? No, no is the end of it. No is the end of it. But you know what? What I have noticed in friend groups, in mixed race friend groups, that it, it never even goes that far because when we're, like you and I are hanging out and maybe a song comes on and they drop the end bomb and you and you slip up and say it because we all get into the music, right? Because we're just singing, just like, we're singing, <laughs> we're singing. But even still, I'm just like, oh, you would and it, you would never be like, oh, let me sing the song. Why? I just was singing a song. No, no, no. I'm gonna I, do I would just be like, I would just be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, I just got caught up in the music exactly. and like, I didn't think about it. Instead of it just being like, you're in a song and you're like, did it, did it, you know, like making it like exactly. a pause. Like when they used to like bleep out the words when they were swearing yes. on the radio, it would be exactly the same as that. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, come on, like, stop, you know. That's why I say in friend groups, it never goes into this deeper conversation. It is always people on the outside. It's, and it's in the workplace, you know? It's when you're out socially, when, you know, everybody's out having a good time. That's where these conversations happen because in mixed, mixed race friend groups, listen, all I gotta do is tell you once that I don't like that. And if you're my friend, we, we don't have to, we're not going into a deep conversation about it. No, so. yeah, it's just like, oh, say, sorry, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's interesting too. It's so funny to just like listening to myself speak because some people get uh, like, I mean, like, really like some people um get upset when you say man or guys to women and yeah. it's so habitual like and, and I don't mean anything by it but I'm just like hey guys you know it's yeah. and so technically yes like it's yeah. a masculine yeah. term but it's become yeah. like y'all right yeah. oh yeah I'm, I'm yelling all day long <laughs> oh my know. gosh I'm not even like a southern and at this point with everything politically going on I say y'all just because I'm like I don't even know what else to say because I'm gonna get in trouble yeah, you can't you guys. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm, you should have saw me like, last, was it maybe last week, like I'm drawing up a policy for work and, and I'm like, it's like 20 pages deep and I'm like, oh crap, I need to go back through and add he, her, they. 
Oh you my gosh. I mean? It's just, so that, it's just that like, whole, the pronoun thing just is. <laughs> So listen, the, the pronouns and it's just like you want because this I do this work so yeah I'm just like I gotta be intentional about inclusion so I'm just like, like you of all people me of all the people could you imagine me trying yeah. to not be intentionally inclusive so I'm I mean it's it's literally the world we we live in but these are the conversations that we, we should be having you know Neutral curiosity. That's what I'm all about. Neutral like, curiosity, neutral safe spaces. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, my buddy Neil says y'all and folks. Yeah, y'all and folks, and I say people. You know, good morning, yeah. good people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like all yeah. of the things. It is just, and I'm I'm so grateful to just get to have this conversation with you this evening. I'm, not, I'm loving it. See, so, it's just so. I'm fun. sorry, universe, for taking so long. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna have to drive up to DC so we can go have lunch. <laughs> yes, we must. Please, if you're ever in DC, I'll make you it my contact for you. Oh my god, I will make yes. it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my god, especially once it warms up. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Um, 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 so many good things. Oh man, so many different conversations. So. Yeah. Sherry, when you were first, I'm like, where to go with the frame? When you were first <laughs> on this journey of doing this as a profession, yeah, what were some key points that you really struggled with, and yeah. how did you overcome them? Um, what I, I think one of my biggest challenges, and 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 I say this, um. To some people, when people think about challenges, they oftentimes associate it with being extremely dramatic and you were barely able to move, you were barely able to, you know, shift through life. Sometimes it's not that that hard, you know what I mean? I do. I have you many, know? Different challenges. Just many different types of challenges. But when I think about when I really wanted to commit to doing this body of work, I think my biggest challenge was harnessing my power and my confidence in a way that didn't um, stop people from hearing my message. Yeah, like so your passion didn't undermine your purpose. Exactly, exactly. Because especially people who don't understand the work that I do, Yeah. when I show up in spaces and they don't already don't understand the material, and then you show up and you give them all of us, you know, all this energy. <laughs> yep. my, yeah, yeah. My biggest challenge was how do I align myself in a way that people hear me without feeling like I'm being inauthentic? Yeah. And as a Black woman doing this work or as a Black woman working in corporate spaces that are predominantly white, I work with really senior people. I, you know, my, my challenge was always, how do I show up and be a proud Black woman without assimilating to the spaces that I'm in? Because most of the spaces that I've worked in or that I work in even now are predominantly white. Yeah. But I have got, I've gotten to a place where I show up authentically as I am. I energy, really focus driven, um, and and people hear me. And I think that I've, you know, I, I've, I've worked myself enough, you know, that I can show up proud and black and, and loud sometimes. But people know, I think people see my heart and yeah. they see my connection to this work. But at first, this challenge was really hard as Black women. We show, like, society has already told the world that Black women are aggressive, Black women are difficult, Black women are hard, Black women are loud. We're not given the grace to be soft and gentle and, you know, and docile. So when I show up confident, all of those things that society has told the world that we are, people see that. And so... One of my ch another challenge is I just started calling people out. <laughs> it's an interesting experience, isn't it? It really is, you know, because sometimes you know you just like forget it, and and I have friends that are just like I'm not fighting that fight, whatever, you know, and they just ignore it. It's like whatever. Yeah. 
But I'm like, ah, no, I got it for you. You know? <laughs> You're like, hold up. I just need like five minutes. Yeah, give, give me five <laughs> minutes. Let me go have a conversation. Um, but I think that I'm, I'm really big on accountability now. Yeah. I'm really like, I know that I'm good at what I do. Awesome. I know I'm good at what I do. So if your bias towards me prevents you from hearing what I'm saying, I'm gonna call you out. And I'm gonna tell you that it's your bias that's preventing you from hearing my message or from hearing what I'm teaching, you know? Um, it's so crazy. I did a, I, I was doing a training maybe two years ago and I got on a Wu-Tang t-shirt, like the old school Wu-Tang t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and people, and I'm like, and I'm talking about DEI and I'm just like talking about, you know, all the things. And someone made a comment about, well, shouldn't you dress professionally when you're training? I'm like, so let's talk about professionalism, should we? <laughs> I'm just like, like professionalism was a construct designed by white cisgender men. Like, so stop it. I'm not any of those things. <laughs> so I determine what's professional, you know? So it's just like, I'm just like living in a space where I'm calling people out. You know, and I'm doing it in a way that's teaching, um, but also creating boundaries for myself and advocating for myself and those around me and those who look like me. And I'm trying to be an example for women who watch me work. Yeah. And say, absolutely. well, if, if Sherry can draw boundaries, I can draw boundaries too. If I can demand respect, if Sherry can demand respect in a way that leaves people intact, I can do that too. Heck yeah. You know? Yeah, I do. I'm all about modeling, uh, you know, especially for like women out there and just to be empowered and just be like, stand in your truth. Yeah. And, and you know, like, just hold on. We have people. to. There's no, re to. there's no reason not to. I mean, just for anybody. I, I remember there was this one time I was down in Austin, uh, Texas uh, mm -hmm. on my cross country journey. And, uh, and to be t totally frank, like, I just, I haven't spent a lot of time around people of color just because of like where I was raised, the places I've traveled, they just, they're min minority in the places yeah. that I've been. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I always told myself, I'm like, I see racism, do something about it, you know, but <laughs> until you're in that moment, you don't actually know. You don't know. Cause it's not comfortable. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so I, cause like in my family, like it's like my mom and my dad, like they're just like, you know, that, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Anyways, so we're just a very, my mom told me the cutest story, which I'll share in a second, just cause it's, it's so freaking adorable. But, um, so I was down in Austin, Texas and I went to a Home Depot mm -hmm. and there was this really tall guy. He's probably like six foot four. And mm -hmm. there was this really, really short Peruvian woman. Okay. Uh, I assume she was from, from like something around that general mm -hmm. area, just um, mm -hmm. for how she looked in her size. And um, I was, my friend and I were, we were returning something and she and I are both like pretty strong sort of personalities. Um, but this guy was being so rude to this woman that mm -hmm. both me and my friend were feeling uncomfortable. It takes a lot to make me feel uncomfortable uh I'm just I'm just not like I don't I don't get rattled and reactive really yeah easy. sounds like me yeah I'm just like it takes particular things and yeah. um but I couldn't I couldn't believe the way this man I mean, he was just like really like leaning like and just mm. like, like it was the body mm -hmm. language it was the tone it was the words like everything about it and I was like literally like shaking it was just like terrible. And so my friend and I, we, we uh, walked away for a second and, uh, and I went to like one of the women came up that was working um, there. And I was just like, hey, do you have any Spanish interpreters or like somebody that can come up and maybe like help facilitate any misunderstandings that might be happening or because mm -hmm. um, you just like you don't necessarily know what what exactly like how to manage the situation. Right. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, oh, yeah, that guy's always he's, he's a problem with all of the women. He's new mm. here. He's and he was in management or whatever. And I asked okay. for the um, yeah. And I asked for the GM. Mm -hmm. And he was on lunch or something. And so I, I walked up and I got That's like right. I, I just walked and I was just like I was stood next to him and I was just like excuse excuse me. She's they both look at me like they're they're like mad confused, <laughs> right? I'm like what are you doing? Who are you? Why are you talking to us? 
And uh, I just got real like up in his face. And I was just like, how you are treating this woman right now is completely unacceptable. And you need to check yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You and, gotta be the voice sometimes. And, yeah. And I was just like, it's not okay. Yeah. It's not okay at all. And he tries to tell me like, you know, oh, you know, she's come here before and all there are all these problems and you know, like and I was like, no. Yeah. You yeah. need to treat her with respect. You are here in customer service. And not only are you here in customer service and representing this entire store right now, but you're a human being and she's a human being and you need to like check yourself and be yeah. Careful. Yeah. And yeah. then um I love and she, it. And she like put her hand on my arm and it was just like like a thank you. Oh, and then, like, yeah. And then it was enough and she's like Okay. yeah and yeah really nice. and then I did still go get the GM of totally. he was off he was finally off of lunch or whatever and I was just like hi and he was super respected like mm-hmm. receptive and respectful which is awesome and I explained the situation to him and he said I will um review the footage of it and address oh good it. so good yeah sometimes you have to advocate you got to be the ally show yeah. up be the ally and even if you're like shaking if your hands are shaking and your voice is shaking and you yeah you still gotta show up and like it was it was hard I'm not gonna lie it was super hard it's not easy work (laughs) it's not easy work but I was also super proud of myself in that moment because I knew that I did what I said I was gonna do that if I saw racism that I was gonna stand Mm -hmm. up against what was wrong good good yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, in this day and time, girl, you have plenty of options. Look, plenty of opportunities, I should say. Yeah, it's so interesting because like I really I don't know, I don't know what it is. Like when I walk around the and I've traveled, I've I've driven through every state in the US. Like yeah. I've been through a lot of places and I guess my timing is just off because I don't I don't see it. Mm. it's such an interesting thing and I don't know if it's just how I walk through the world and the people that I magnetize and like who I engage with and how I engage with them Mm -hmm. and or maybe people just there's a thing they just don't treat people like that (laughs) that's not gonna work out well for you if you try and pull that chip and you're around me yeah and it's just really interesting because it's not like I am unaware that it happens in the world but it's a very interesting experience when you travel as much as I do and you just don't Mm -hmm. it just don't see it and um and I try to be aware I try to pay attention to you know because Mm -hmm. I want to stand up for the people who don't have a voice um but it is, it is fascinating as a conversation. It's fascinating, but it's also one of those things like racism, racism is also one of those things that it can also be extremely subtle. And if you don't know it when you see it, it could be happening all around you. Quite it's possibly. So, you know, I'm those, totally open to that possibility. The micro, yeah, the microaggressions. Yeah, the microaggressions, stuff. they happen all, all the time. All yeah, the time. I also pay attention to people's nonverbal communication, though, a lot mm-hmm. and their energy because of the work that I do. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I feel like I, I try to notice yeah those little yeah. those little things if somebody starts mm-hmm. to like shirk if somebody's mm-hmm. like said something mm-hmm. to them or ignored yeah. them in a space where they shouldn't have. Yeah, um, there was one <laughs> with my birthday party and one of my friends, uh, uh, she came to it last year and mm-hmm. um, she just by happenstance hadn't had her drink. And so like everybody else had been served and like two people, including me from my table, like mm-hmm. I talked to the owner. I was like, hey, so my friend hasn't gotten her drink. <laughs> Can we get some service? Like, you need to, like, one of my other friends, she's like, this is completely, she's from New York. She's like, this is unacceptable. <laughs> white people and then my friend she's so she, she's like no you guys like please don't make a big deal about it it's fine I'm like it's not fine <laughs> I, that is me I I am that friend that when we go out well more so my brothers and sisters they kind of know me I'm just like and it's so funny my brother lives in Denver and um he knows that I'm just like just a loud mouth and just you know <laughs> It's like, oh God, something yes. comes up. It's so funny. Like we're about to, <laughs> it, it was so funny. One time I, I flew out, you know, to hang out and <laughs> we were going to a restaurant and before we get out of the truck, he's like, listen, <laughs> you need to be on your bed. Yes. Yes. I want to deal with all this today. <laughs> Pretty much. She was like, look, these people that, you know, they don't want any smoke. You know, they don't want to smoke. They, they just want to, you know, they're very low key out here. And I'm just like, okay, I guess. 
So, so you don't want me to complain if my food is wrong, is what you're telling me. <laughs> Listen, some of us were put here on earth to protect others. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like that is part of my charge while I'm here in this realm is to protect those around me who can't protect themselves or advocate for people. So I know what my mission is. (laughs) That's a beautiful thing. It's very empowering for any human being to be Mm -hmm. able to know what their purpose is. Yeah. You know, to be able to let go of what society says that we're supposed to do and really learn about yourself, to let go of familia indoctrination and societal constructs and our own personal traumas and look past the noise and be like, hey, who am I and what is my purpose? Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is why I want to empower and encourage women to just, you know, um, I posted something on social media today. They just talked about the difference between um, insecurities and low self-esteem. It's, you know, we all have insecurities, but it is the low self-esteem that prevents us from walking in our power and confidence. Yeah. You know, we yeah. all have insecurities. All right. We can acknowledge those, but we don't have to allow those insecurities to turn into low self-esteem that actually force us to be stuck in places. So (sighs) it feels good. Yeah. And like, so for women who are in that space or men for that matter, um, or any person and how you identify in the world, like all these caveats, I feel like I have to just be like, here, this is a disclaimer of like all the things I say it wrong. Like just know (laughs) that it's well intended and I'm just tired. Um, (laughs) <laughs> so for people as you yes. love them, also, for, people. for people y'all and folks um <laughs> what would you recommend for people um as like next steps if they're feeling stuck and disempowered um to be able to either get resources or something they could do on their own yeah I'm really big on spending time with yourself Oprah says something that I absolutely live by she says when you don't know what to do do nothing Mm, I like that. Okay. And we know Mama <laughs> Oprah is always right. <laughs> <laughs> so Mama Oprah mm. said, if you don't know what to do, do nothing. And I also, I'll, I often find when people feel like they just, something's, we're off, something's wrong. I'm not getting to that next level. I'm having, I'm repeating the same issues, the same problems, either in my personal life or in my professional life. Sometimes you got to sit still and just take stock. Yeah. Spend time. I'm, I'm really big on journals and writing. So sometimes you got to sit down and just listen. What are the challenges? What am I, what, what are the behaviors that I keep repeating? What are the same results that I keep getting? What's my challenge? What what is this next level that I can't get to? What can't I get past? You got to identify what your issues are first. You can do nothing if you don't know what you're trying to fix. (laughs) How are you going to fix something if you don't know what you're trying to fix? You know? I do. Exactly. You got to spend time identifying the problem. That is in everything that we do. You got to identify the problem. And once you've identified the problem, you okay. okay. What does it look like if I didn't? You got to start to visualize. Mm-hmm. Absent these barriers, absent these challenges, what would the vision, what is the vision of what my life would be? What is the next level? Visualize it. Then you got to think about what is the plan? What is the plan? How do I get there? And that's the challenge. Some people, we know what we want, but we don't know how to get there. Yeah, you're like, because if I knew how to get there, I'd already be there. I'd already be there, which is why, but then but then that's also a challenge too. Some people know, but they don't have anyone that is holding them accountable. Yeah, yeah, you don't have the will. Sometimes the, like so much in life is just overwhelming that you don't have the will oh my god take action and then you have oftentimes the shame and the guilt that goes with that as well so what would your advice be to help people through the shame that they oftentimes experience when doing this sort of process one you got a partner you gotta you can't do it by yourself you gotta find your village and sometimes (laughs) you gotta find your tribe and sometimes it's not it's people that we don't even know which is why people like us exist for yeah. people who yeah. don't have their own personal tribes. You sure. gotta find, you gotta connect to 
someone or something that will help you. So I tell if if anyone is listening, find your tribe, find your tribe, reach out, you know, um, and then start to do the work. You know, you can't if if you're stuck and you're having challenges and nothing is changing, that's because you haven't changed the space in which you can change. So you got to pull people in. You got to connect. You got to do the hard work of saying, I got to find people. And that's yeah. finding a coach, you know, you know, enrolling in a program, reaching out, you know, to do the, to do the work, you know, and, and I'm not one of those people that say, you know, that tells people who are having life challenges or traumas, you should read this book. <laughs> the hell is a book going to do? <laughs> If, if I don't know how to get to the, you know what I mean? I mean, it wasn't like, Brene Brown's work. I mean, I don't know. I... <laughs> yes, Brene Brown. But I'm also, yes, and you know, I love a good book. I love a yeah. good book. Yeah. But I'm also, I want you to read the book, but I also want you to partner with someone who is going to motivate you and move you. You know what I mean? Oh, so absolutely. We got we to layer resources. <laughs> Yeah, because the thing is, uh, what I have discovered over the course of my life is that like, I've done most of my work by myself. Mm -hmm. And it has taken so much longer than it ever needed to. Yeah. If I had had somebody like me in my life when I was in my teens and my 20s or even my 30s, my life would have been radically different. It would have been, it would have been better. I would have been more functional. I would have been happier. I, you know, I wouldn't have spent years and years and years having suicidal ideations like yes. every single day without yes. having people to talk to and like all yes. those sorts of things like age like 13 yes. to 26 13 yes. years of dealing with that behind the scenes while I smiled at everybody else yes. and like I didn't take drugs and I didn't I didn't go to a counselor and I don't feel shame about that like and Absolutely. being able to tell your story of mm -hmm. um, this, like, this is your story. Like, like mm -hmm. I made it through that and I make it worth something by sharing that with other people. And yeah. Depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, like all those things, confusion, frustration, like mm -hmm. you don't have to let that own you. Like right. it's part of your story, mm -hmm. but it's not you. And I right. think that's a really important thing to be able to talk to people about and be like, you are not alone. There are other people that are struggling. That's this right. is not something you need to feel ashamed of. It's mm -hmm. just like when you are in those spaces, it's because some crucial need in your life is not being met. Like you're not feeling yeah. seen or heard or understood or supported or safe, yeah. you know, like yeah. in so many other things, but like those core things, like when you have those like five things, like depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts are probably not going to like be happening unless they don't have space. chemical imbalance in your body that's creating, yeah. you know, because they don't have the space. They don't and have the space. So you can do it alone if you want, but it's going to take you a shit ton longer to get to where you need to go. If you Absolutely. don't have like, a, like drop your pride and drop your ego, drop your expectations yep. and just be like, yo, I am struggling and I, I need help. support yep. and finding the grace. Because like, sometimes when you're trying to figure out like what the core is, it's like when you've got a ball of yarn right? Mm -hmm. And you're trying to pull the string and pull the string and pull the string and be like, okay, is it this? No, is it this? No, is it this? No. Yep. It's, it takes a while to unravel everything and get to the point where you actually find that one string, yes. that yes. one string that allows the whole thing to unravel in a really healthy yep. way. And then you're like, boom, straight line. Yep. Straight line. Yep. And, and but like, but having the will and the, like, the fortitude and resilience and perseverance mm -hmm. to be able to continue to try even when yeah. everything feels like failure, yep. that yeah. is, that is life. That is the journey. And that's why having a tribe is so important because we all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses. We all have our blind spots, but when we have a tribe of people that we trust, we respect, and we love, and we know they're coming from a place of love when they talk to us about the shit that's hard, yep. then they can see your blind spots and help you make the whole thing the theme. They Absolutely. can be that strength to your weakness so that in a holistic fashion, yeah. everyone heals everyone builds faster so yeah, yeah. So true. grace baby <laughs> love it love it love it find your tribe people find your tribe and sometimes you get to be surprised and you gotta be patient you know like sherry i feel like sherry is part of my tribe absolutely yeah we absolutely. were like busy love and now it. we're just like 
we love yeah. each other. Like, look, it's amazing. And it's so cool yes. and getting to be supportive. Yes. And so um, That's right. you're sometimes you're just one conversation away from like a beautiful, like friendship oh partnership. Yes. Like yes. Yes. show up, yeah. show up. I love it. This is, <laughs> this is great. This is great. This is great. I needed this, especially it's been a really, really long, long three days. So, you know, it's been, it's, it's, listen, we've been busy. We've yeah. been busy. We've been busy. But I, I really appreciate having this opportunity to finally chat. Um, we will be doing dinner soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Very soon. Um, so I'm super excited. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for your time and your wisdom, and your candor, and showing up as your authentic self. I really appreciate you tonight and in the world in general. Thank you. And, you know, I appreciate you big time. Thank you. Adore you. And thank you for doing the work that you are doing. Um, thank you. I said this before, before we got on live, but I couldn't do it. You have taken on a huge feat for this month, but I do appreciate you creating space for those who look like me in a very special moment. Um, you know, we got a lot going on in the world and for you to create space on a platform that you don't have to, for you to <laughs> intentionally do it, you know, to tax yourself, you have other, you know, things going on. So I do appreciate it. So I, it's not lost on me what you're doing, um, what you decided to do this month. So, for, you know, it's been a long time for us to try to get it together, but now that we have, I'm grateful to the universe and we are forever connected yeah 110 percent. thank you so much for all of your kind words and support i really appreciate it my dear um is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience before we log off for the evening no this has been great if anyone wants to follow me i'm on i'm mostly active on instagram so um my instagram is elevate underscore c3 underscore llc follow me I drop nuggets all the time. I have a great program coming up in April. So oh. woo, woo. we got work to do out in the world. So I want, you know, join my tribe. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, and so, yes, everybody, please go follow Sherry. Uh, she always has excellent wisdom to share, obviously, in her awesomeness. And if you would like to come see me for empowerment coaching with or without Courses or to be on the show, um, please do connect with me at www.globalequineaffiliates.com or on Instagram at Elysia Best. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, guys, we will see you. Well, actually, we'll see you tomorrow as we get to work with uh, Dre McLaughlin. So stay tuned. Awesome. Bye. Bye. <laughs>